what is up you guys and of course welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly the Scarander and today we got ourselves a match against Richard unknown on Twitch as Titan Atlas and he's a superb player and we played a lot against one another for yeah we started back in one year and it seems like we are very even when it comes to um, outposts of winner or losers I think we're pretty much even on that and we have really, really good battles where it actually evens out and um, yeah, I'm just in general scared of this guy for that reason alone. So, anyway, go through in his team here. We decided to have an RU ish battle with three RU and three NU. So, he's gonna have the Embor, uh, Moonshan, if I remember correctly, Omastar, Armaldo, Hillisk, and Steelix. So, definitely a potent team here. And um, I have a kind of a joke team, but it has a serious pokes that are able to actually outwin a lot of things here. So Gogoat is my joke Pokemon because he is the one that brought a Gogoat against me and won because of one <laughs> in one battle. So I decided to bring my own and try to outmatch him here. And a Dewblade, Torkoal, Meloetta, Electrode and Pangoro. And basically I don't know which one is most potent. This is the first Aureobel I have without an Hillisk and that is just going to blow my mind and seeing a Hillisk on my opponent's side means that this is kinda serious. So, with all of this in mind, let's go. So yeah, I felt very obvious to bring Electro, so I decided not to do that and bring a counter for whatever comes in. So I was I hoping for him either bring the Hill Lisk or the Steelix. I was actually kind of lucky, I mean I went for Zion, which is my Go-Goat, and it's a Salt Vest Go-Goat, and very good at that. And I'm basically just gonna break it sturdy in case there's a setup Steelix, which it isn't, that is the Mega Form, and my sturdy break will not really matter since it isn't sturdy anymore, obviously. But I actually score a crit here, which is great because Steelix is kinda tough to deal with, and that damage kinda tells me that it's especially defensive and not defensive because, well, hell, it doesn't really need defenses now, do it? It is, you know, 230 base. You can't, you can't stop that, it is not as simple. So anyway, Jeff the Moon is coming, and obviously, like, on the streamer, I was just like, alright, that is defensive. I can't really break through that, and um, I decide to uh, switch out right off the bat, because uh, Muna either has something that is with status effects, or could set up coal mines and moonlight, so I decide to switch to Phony, the Electrode, and basically just gonna taunt it, because I need to, I am forced to. And I'm actually gonna hope for him to stay in, because if he stays in, and then he's gonna get in far away on, and since I am electric type, I won't be affected by it synchronized. So I actually had that in mind. And uh, yeah, he does decide to stay in here, and like I said, that is kind of lucky throughout the game. I'm like, leftovers is so slow. <laughs> I'm like, a few, I one turn ahead. Anyway, I taunt him so he can't do a call mine, and after this, I will uh, go for a thunder wave. And uh, like I said, there, due to the synchronized, uh, he's gonna come back at me, but since I am an electric type, I won't be affected. And basically, at this go, he's actually forced to attack me. Since he got one call mine up, you know, that is better than nothing. So I decided to go for a Volt Switch here just to get some damage off. And uh, I have life from this Electrode because life orb gives it a little bit of extra power because this is actually an HP based uh, Electrode. You don't see those too often. It's more of a supporter and annoyer than it is actually a sweeper. Obviously, not a sweeper. But um, the Volt Switch actually does more to me than it does to him, and that's kind of funny. Uh, so we'll go for the signal beam here. I am an assault vested monster of a panda, and the uh, flay, the pangoro, is actually gonna take this quite well. And um, obviously he's feeling the pressure here. A knockoff will do more than he is actually suited to, and uh, he will decide to switch out. I decided I must play it safe, so I didn't go for drain punch. I went for a knockoff. He's going to orbit the Steelix, and uh, yeah. It's, it doesn't seem to do a lot of damage, but in contrast to how bulky Steelix is, this combination of knockoff and Dream Punch is more than enough to take it out. And uh, basically I'm almost back at full health here, and uh, he's gonna bring the, the heal is here, and uh, I know he's not gonna stay in. I know he's gonna go for a Volt Switch, so I decided to go for a knockoff, hoping for him to go to the Mujana. This Volt Switch does roughly, what is that, 60-ish damage, so that is actually quite right. And uh, he's gonna bring the Jeff, and I'm very lucky here to, of course, pull this combination off. And I go for a knockoff, and they fully take it out. And after this, I will decide to go for another knockoff, finish it off. He'll decide to preserve this and go to his uh, Armaldo. And uh, I'm gonna be completely honest with you here, guys. 
I am able to outspeed this Ormoldu, but at the stream here, I really didn't feel that comfortable, so I decided to switch out, and I'm gonna switch out the Dewblade due to my ability to kind of soak him out. Uh, of course, Ormoldu wears um, the one and only move that is so annoying, besides Exist, so it's gonna be the knockoff and knock out my Eviolite. Ev and uh, yeah, that's an issue. Uh, really, really denting me, and it did a significant amount of damage considering I actually knocked off his choice band. Ormol is actually kind of potent to be honest, and I think that was the correct play to go for Exiso. So, anyway, I do take out this surfboard, and he's gonna bring the Lord Helix, or um, yeah, the Oma Star. And uh, you know, I've gone against a few Oma Stars before, so I know usually they affect, affect focus, focus band, or focus sash, or weakness policy. It's something in that combination together with. Um, Shell Smash, I was thinking, alright, he might go for a Shell Smash, but I should be able to outspeed anyway, because I'm still an Electrode, and pretty darn fast. And he is actually fully invested in speed, and with that will outspeed me by 3 points. And that is unfortunate, because I did decide to go for a Thunder Wave here, because I didn't want to activate the Witness Policy if that were the case. Uh, so, that is my phony going down. So that was the first mistake, obviously. The second mistake I'll make is that I was so sure a Gogo with Assault Vest was able to take an Ice Beam. Um, it takes at least 1 or 2% once I calculate. I really want to check that out. So this was a huge mistake on my part because I had a safe switch, but I didn't want to do it because I really wanted... I wanted some entertainment value to those who watched, and really I just want to see Gogo come through, and that was a huge mistake. So now I do the correct play, which obviously is bringing Meloetta and just finish it off. Meloetta with Assault Vest is more than enough to cope with any stab move. I mean, not well, it almost takes me out there, but it is definitely enough. And uh, like I said, I basically lose two pokes for that kind of arrogance, to be honest. I definitely, definitely felt safe. I did so many correct plays in the beginning, and had such a good lead that I didn't see my own f flaws here, obviously. And uh, now I'm definitely in trouble, because now we're both 4 for 4 and he actually catched up with me, and I have nothing to sw to take this Dark Pulse besides my uh, Pangoro, and even if I did that, I didn't feel safe to actually leave my Melweta left, because he's not investing in his speed whatsoever. So anyway, Flay is coming back here, and obviously he's not gonna stay in, he's gonna go to his Mushana, and uh, I'm just gonna go for Drain Punch, because I want HP, like, really bad, like, extremely bad, and uh, two Drain Punches should be enough, and uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but the thing is, Mushan has a lot of HP, so it's basically it's um, HP pinata for my Pangoro to kind of catch up, because Pangoro is now basically my win condition. Pangoro is the only thing stopping Heliosk, but my Pangoro can't stop his Embo, so that is an issue, and that Embo is gonna come in now. So now we are two for three. Uh, I'm definitely in the lead, but I have nothing that I really want to take to this Flare Blitz, so I decided to. Uh, do a safe switch to my ether, my um, Dewblade, because it's practically dead. And um, I decide to sack it and then bring my Torkoal just to kind of phase him off with the Torkoal. And uh, I say that it's not a bad play at all actually, but at the same time, and this kind of hit me throughout this battle, that I was so sure that he was gonna stay in, but he's actually choice bandit. And uh, yeah, that just, he won't cope with that that well sadly, so he decides to switch out. So I should have went for Stealth Frogs here and not Toxic, and I'm gonna tell you why in a few seconds. So I go for a Toxic here, and I expect him, of course, to bring him, bring the Yellow Disc here and go for a Surf, so... Basically, I'm just going to switch out and soak that Surf as good as my ability can, because I know I can take two Surf in this Hill Disc, so he's actually forced to switch out or sack off the Hill Disc, which I feel he's not... He's probably not feeling that that is his best way of going. So I'm gonna bring Flay here, and uh, he's going for that surf, as I told you guys, and uh, I'm able to cope with it. It does roughly 50 HP, and um, I can definitely, like I said, take one more of those without a care in the world. And like I said, he is Specs, which means that he's logged into it. So I'm just gonna go for that Brain Punch, and... Um, damn, I should have each Q on this one, but then again, then I wouldn't be so close as well, anyway. So anyway, go for that Brain Punch, recover back some HP, and it is obviously not enough. And uh, even with Stealth Frogs, that wouldn't have taken it out, but I'm going to switch out now to my Torkoal. And uh, yeah, the thing is here that he's going to go for Super Power, and that is correct play because he, everything else is somewhat resisted, and at least that's a stab move that's going to whittle him down throughout. And he takes actually three Super Power to take me out, 
Uh, so I do decide to go for a Lava Plume here. I had either Rapid Spin or Lava Plume, but I knew that Helios couldn't take me out. Lava Plume was my best bet. Had I gone now for the Stealth Rocks, as you will see here, this Lava Plume in combination with previous, if I had Stealth Rocks up, would have been able to take out this Embor, which really blew my mind watching this battle again, that that was a key play I really, really screwed up. I was so close at this, but obviously, He's gonna take me out here, and there's nothing I can do to, you know, cope with this situation, obviously. And, and my Pangor is gonna come in, and it is not able to take it out, of course, because Pangoro, after three superpowers, he has, to be honest, pretty much no attack left. But it still does a fair amount of damage, and uh, that really blew my mind that it still was, you know, on par with that situation. It actually does almost enough to take me out, even, like I said, after 3 drops, that is 75% gone. That <laughs> and it still does a significant amount of damage on my Pangoro. So anyway, I do get the Ember, of course, out of here, but the last phase of here, which being healed is against Pangoro. These two were the rivals, and one is gonna really go down to the one that survived these two is gonna win, but obviously I have not enough HP to take a Thunderbolt. A Thunderbolt does roughly at best 80 HP on my Pangoro. So the reason that I didn't go for Stealth Rocks really, really annoys me now. Now when I see how close they were. It was definitely a great game, Richard. I, wow. It really came down to the wire and you definitely deserved to win. You really did. So yeah, I hope you guys really liked this belt because I surely did. And uh, yeah, I really feel that Richard came through here in the end. And you know, he really stepped up this game Consider I got such a great lead in the beginning, you know, got the predictions down against him. Then my arrogance, you know, got the best of me and I started to play around a bit. And I definitely, definitely underappreciated how hard an Omastar really hit off that shell smash. And that really came to bite me in the ass, me losing two pokes and me not going for stealth, late stealth rocks also made it definitely the last nail in the coffin that I couldn't demise or take out the Embor and left my Pangora pretty much to die. My Pangora did major work in this battle and so did his heal disc and I really felt throughout this battle this was against those two who was gonna win this battle because they were the both that could dent each other's team, they really really did. Obviously Embor definitely could too but had a lot of more issues than my Pangoro had and like I said his heal disc can just come in and out and just do damage. So yeah, late game rocks there would have helped me significantly. That was definitely like that was my last play I could have made. I don't really know, you know, watching this battle again why I went for Toxic. I probably thought it was gonna stay in and it was another set than Choice Band, but of course it was. Why wouldn't he? Everybody run rock reckless choice band now. It hurt just so much. My god, it hurts. Um so anyway guys, I really hope you like this battle. And Richard, as I said, GG man, that was definitely one of the best battles I had in some time. It was definitely down to the wire, and uh, I really felt the outcome was fair. I did the wrong plays in the ending, and you definitely did the right ones throughout there after you got momentum, and held that really, really good, and I was generally impressed. Very good game, man. Very good. So anyway, guys, if you like this battle, don't forget to leave a like, and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky is the limit. So good, guys, and take care, alright? Bye.